Good morning, Justice Warriors. How are you guys? It's Monday. Bloody Monday. Or no, that's Bloody Sunday, right? Manic Monday. Um, it's the 21st of August. It's just after 1030 this morning as I'm getting on here to make my video. I apologize that I was not able to get a video done this weekend. I really wanted to, um, but it just didn't happen. You know, kids can blame it on them. And I'm trying to get my lights. I know I get complaints that it's so dark and I don't like it too dark, but I also don't like things to get washed out. So it's funny. It's funny. The thing with the lights is you have to have red and green. So this is the green. This is the red. <laughs> anyway, my problems are not your problems. So let's get straight to it. Everything I say is simply my opinion, simply for the sake of conversation. I'm always hoping to open up a discussion and to learn something. I aim for my videos to be educational and all of my content is made for YouTube and that's an entertainment platform. Please hit your like button if you feel like it and share, subscribe, ring your notification bell. That's just a little bit out of the frame. Let me see if I can do this without ruining everything. Like you make the slightest adjustment. Yep. And there you go. There you have it. So, um, let's see. And then there's my subliminal message here that I won't try to read to you because it's too much of a distraction. But now that I've said that you guys will be like, what's she talking about? It's just bricks. It's my frame with the wire letters that say work hard, stay humble. So yeah, I know I'm a little preachy sometimes. I try not to be, but I can't help it. <laughs> I'm, I'm a mama. So um, as you guys know, I have four kids and it is just nuts getting through a summer. Getting through a weekend can be nuts, but um, I survived. Summer's over. It's funny. You grew up your whole life wanting it to be an endless summer. And then as a parent, au contraire. So, um, getting right into the Kylie Rodney case, you guys, eh, I can't believe I've never thought of this until this morning. <laughs> okay. So as everybody knows, that is a regular on my channel and thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I started my channel almost a year ago to get some of my opinion out there about the Kylie Rodney case, simply because once she was discovered, I thought the Kylie Rodney case would be over and done with. And it was crazier to me than anything I'd seen in true crime so far that her being discovered just made it worse. Here we are an entire year later. Oh my goodness. It's the anniversary. It's the anniversary. I just realized that. Okay. So everybody who was at the Prosser party, the graduation party, the Kylie Rodney party, whatever the you want to call it, everybody that was there, can we start calling them survivors? Because she didn't survive the party, but they did, but they're not witnesses because they didn't see anything they were just there. So if you're following the Idaho four case, the way I have been, those are almost the precise words out of chief Fry's mouth, talking about the two surviving witnesses in the Idaho four massacre. They're survivors. At first I thought, yeah, they are, they're survivors. They made it through, the other ones didn't. And here we are 10 months out and it's, or almost 10 months out, or just past 10 months out. Where are we at? Coming up on 10 months. So in a few weeks. So we just passed the nine month mark, I think, of um, since the Idaho four that happened on November 13th, 2022. So now, in August. Yeah, we're, we just passed the nine month. Um, and 
that nine month anniversary was also the five year anniversary of the freaking Watts case, you guys. And I don't think I'm the only one that believes that there's not full justice in the Watts case and that there's still a co-conspirator, an accomplice, an accessory before, during, and or after the fact who's running loose among us. And I think that needs to be scrutinized. But let's get back to Kylie Rodney. Kylie, Kylie, Kylie. It's like Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. Um, yeah, what the F, you guys? What the F? I am so appreciative for every content creator that speaks her name. I'm so appreciative for every viewer that watches and types her name into the chat or into the comment section. You know, I'm not about clicks and all that jazz. So shifting gears from the Idaho 4 case back to the Kylie Rodney case, my views, it, it affects them big time. And of course, it's kind of fun to know that you're growing and growing and growing and more people are paying attention and watching. But What's more important to me is sticking with Kylie Rodney right now. I feel like a lot of these channels that are pushing really hard and putting their information together are doing something. And especially passing that one year anniversary and we're still not, the case still isn't closed with the California Highway Patrol. Once it closes, once that report is out, it's really hard, all but impossible to get a case reopened and re-examined. Of course, it's not impossible and it happens, but it's rare, it's very rare. So I'm honestly thinking out of sarcasm to start calling everybody at the Kylie Rodney party a survivor because they weren't witnesses. Nobody saw nothing. Nobody saw her leave. Give me a freaking break. There's no tire tracks, a certain Yosemite Sammy I am -y says again and again. Um, and what about her necklaces? I've got three necklaces on right now. It's one necklace that looks like three. Her necklaces, I think, were actually three. But why was it such a big deal? Like, oh, well... We're not really looking for her because we know we're not going to find her. But if you find her necklaces, that might give us a clue. Like her necklaces and her car were like more sought after than she was. I don't get it. I don't get it. Um, unless if there was some knowledge that she wasn't going to be found. Then yeah, let's just look for the necklace. Just Let's just look for the car so that we can, you know go on this little Easter egg hunt. It's disgusting. So it's my theory that those necklaces were removed from her person and that was known that her person did not have those necklaces on. Like maybe they fell off. Maybe they got ripped off by somebody who won a friendly fight. But whatever it was, somehow there were three necklaces back on the remains that were found, discovered in the back of her CRV a year ago today. So she was identified by her necklaces. They could have identified her by the serial number on the plate in her arm. And they didn't even do that, you guys. It just is so sketchy that it's even her. The size was off. The tattoo was off. I mean, my goodness, we won't even get into the weight of the lungs, the little baby lungs. Um, but another thing in all of the reviewing that um, Shan on Squirrels on Fire and a lot of these other great content creators have been doing, and I've been listening and paying attention, I conclude, I concluded over the weekend, I think yesterday, that she was roofied. Why on earth would little Miss Yosemite Sammy Iami say a handful of times, everything she drank, I drank. We were sharing all the same cups, passing them back and forth. 
that was to say there's no way she could have been roofied because if she had been roofied, I would have been roofied. So that indicates to me that she was roofied. Straight up. Straight up. So another little Yosemite Sammy I ami. Why? In all of her talking about everyone that was there, you know, all the surviving witnesses, or I'm sorry, survivors, because they weren't witnesses, all the survivors from the party, none of them have names except Mags. I mean, Magdalene Larson. Like, what about her middle initial, Yosemite Sammy, I am? You left that out. So, really, it seems to me that Mags was getting thrown under the bus. Maybe because she knows something and that was a threat to make sure that she stayed in line and played her part. And the more I listen to those interviews with SS and Jaeger Maestro, these kids said some of the exact same phrases, you guys. That's what people do. That's how they reveal themselves when they've concocted a story. They use some of the same phrases. They say things in the same order. They have these little tells that they don't realize how obvious it is, but law enforcement does. But law enforcement doesn't care, it seems. Again, another similarity with the Idaho Four Massacre, and the Kylie Rodney party. So, yeah. Um, let me talk for a moment about that um, Hoberger uh, hearings that happened on Friday, because I'm sure everybody's been paying attention over the weekend to what was said and done in those hearings. And not a lot was said, not a lot was done. Essentially, the big key is that Judge Judge has given himself some time to decide whether the DNA evidence, how that's going to be used. And if the prosecution has to give all of the information over to the defense of how they got to the conclusion that the DNA was a match to Koberger. This is crucial. This will make or break the case, in my humble opinion. And it seems to me, in my layman mindset, that it would be a given that, of course, the defense is entitled to that information. And so it seems to me that the prosecution's angle is to say, well, we didn't have a way that we came up with it. We just pulled it out of our rear ends or out of our hats or out of thin air. And so we can't produce anything for you. We don't have any records to give to you because there are no records because we destroyed them. I mean, they never existed. I mean, it's quite profoundly crazy in my humble non-professional opinion because I'm not a court expert. I'm a mental health professional. I'm considered an expert in post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm definitely no court expert. So I'm not trying to sell myself like I am. Um, but I do have some experience and I do have connections and family connections, family ties where I can ask questions and get answers in real time. So that is extremely helpful. Um, and one of those questions that I asked somebody who was in the know is that there's no way on earth you could get everything off of a leather sheath. There's just no way on earth. The leather is too porous, you guys. The leather is too porous. So that leather sheath is also another crucial piece, like the crux of the case, it contains said DNA, but also we have the PCA that says that the lead detective could see it in plain sight, standing in the doorway, laying on top of the bed, on top of the comforter next to Madison Mogan. However, 
That's the only place it says that. Other places it says that it was under her or partially under her. So which was it? You can't have it both ways or three ways. I mean, seriously, it's absolutely insane. That sheath is shaky at best. And I'm borrowing that from subconscious mouth. He, he kept calling it shaky evidence, the shaky sheath. Um, it's very shaky. It's very shady. It's very suspicious. Um, there's not really any evidence or claim allegation that the weapon that was used to take these lives was the one affiliated with said sheath. So if the sheath was planted, that makes sense to me. But it seems to me that some people think that the criminal defendant planted it, but he accidentally forgot to take off his little DNAs that were in the button snap. <laughs> I think he would have planted it. Like, sure, I understand the theory that he might have planted it to try to say make people think that it was somebody that had been in the military or specifically the Marines. But it doesn't make any sense to me that he would have planted it. What seems to me is that it might not have even been planted there at the crime scene, but that it was basically planted after the fact. I don't know, you guys. It's shaky evidence, I'm telling you. Um, so the only other thing I really wanted to touch on this morning before wrapping this short one up is the, uh, the Maui tragedy. You guys, holy crap. One sec. So sad. It's so sad. So a couple things about that Maui tragedy that make me very suspicious and scratch my head and say something is a foul here. A couple of things. The fact that, so the power was out and school was canceled. So kids were at home unsupervised because their parents were still at work. Okay, I'm going to jump around a little bit here. Um, there were people trying to evacuate that were stopped and told to go back because it wasn't time to evacuate yet. The person who's resigned from the position, the leadership role, that the guy who was responsible for not sounding the sirens said he didn't sound the sirens because he was afraid that people might think it was a tsunami and that they'd run towards the fire that was up high on higher ground. That's absurd. It's like written into their policy and procedure that there's different tones and that it is used for fire. So that guy is talking out of his rear end. And obviously he resigned like the very next day, but to me, that's not enough. If he's largely responsible for hundreds of people's lives ending, thousands of people's lives being destroyed. He deserves criminal punishment, criminal judgment. That's criminal. The system is there. They have the best system in the world for their tsunamis. Those tsunamis are real and there's different tones and they know when there's a fire that they're not going to run up the hill towards the fire. That is like the most ludicrous response to pull out of the rear end. It's just infuriating. And then when you look around, so I was in Shanda's live on Friday night and she did a really good job of um, doing like the Google map quest and going right to the the destruction, the dis what was 
destroyed is what would be considered more where the locals lived. None of the resorts were destroyed. And someone in the chat was like, oh, well, that's because they've got like the greatest sprinkler system or whatever. No, I don't think that's why. There's been a war for generations, much like the Native Americans with our American government. There's been a war in Hawaii with the locals who own the land, who have had it inherited over multiple generations, and developers that want to buy that land. And these people, many of them, are not interested in selling, no matter how desperate they are for money. It's not their thing. So when I look at these pictures and see what a freaking war zone it looks like, and remember when I've gone to Hawaii and visited and met locals who lived in shacks on million dollar waterfront ocean property with the waves in their front yard. This is real to me. This is very real that the land is being stolen. Someone said, well, you know, they, they can still sell the land, uh, I'm like, not if they're deceased. They can't sell their land if they're deceased. Well, their families could still sell the land. Well, no, not if they're deceased too. The people that would have inherited it from their parents are no longer with us. So we've got hundreds, hundreds of missing people, many of which are children. And this is terrifying to me. And I think we should all be terrified and we should be paying very close attention to what's going on over there. If this was regular America, you know that it would have been taken care of like that. But it's not considered regular America. You know, it's it's like an addendum. It's an adjunct state, basically much like Puerto Rico. So, you know, things are not good. We've got one crisis after another. And what next? I don't like to be a conspiracy theorist, you guys, but you look at situations like Marilyn Monroe, you look at JFK, and people said anyone who thought anything was up were conspiracy theorists and come to find out something was up with both of those cases. So it's not a conspiracy theory. If it's real, then it's just a conspiracy. If there's more than one person involved in planning it. So, Oh, what else, what else do I need to say before I wrap up? Um, I just want to say that, again, I'm so grateful to have my channel. It's such an excellent creative outlet. It's a lot of fun to do this and to express myself and to hear you guys express yourselves. I do want to get on more lives. I keep almost going live, but um, it's just so hard because then I have to be more coordinated with my time and it's just been a wacky summer. So even though I'm down one kid because he's in boot camp and he'll be graduating soon and then um, he still won't be coming back into the, the family picture. But um, yeah, just a lot of chaos with summer. So that's my excuse. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, so have a really good afternoon. I'm hoping that I will be doing a video every single day this week. And I'm just, you know, amazed. I'm getting close to 400 videos, you guys. I think this is my 397th if I'm counting right, but that doesn't count all of the um, panels that I've been on. And thanks to everyone who's invited me onto their panels. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, did I say thank you? <laughs> 
Have a great afternoon. I hope you can get some exercise and sunshine and fresh air and that you're at the start of a very productive work week. I hope you're getting your rest, your relaxation, staying hydrated, good nourishment, fruits and veggies and high protein. And I think that's about it. I'll do my little thumbs up thing one more time. Da, 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 da. And share, subscribe, ring your notification bell. And am I forgetting anything? Sending you light, sending you love. See you on the next one. Thank you kindly from the bottom of my heart. I cannot tell you how much it means to me that I've had this channel for almost a year. I felt like when I started, if I could get more than 10 subs and, and do it for a year, that that would be a huge success. So um, I'm amazed that it's over 4,000 subscribers and, you know, I'm a week shy of having the channel for a year. And then I think my first video was August 30th. Second video was August 31st. Third video was September 2nd. So again, in honor of the one year anniversary of when Kylie Rodney's vehicle was discovered with her remains in the back hatch. Um, hopefully we'll get some answers eventually. So peace out. Have a great Monday. See you soon. Thanks again.